Okay, I got the server shot two from Cry Product Creations on Kickstarter. The server shot came to me in April of 2018, which is the exact time that they said I would get it. So good job there. I am doing a overview on what the server shot two can do and what I plan to use it for. The server shock is a server controller that allows you to use um, a PS4 controller to control servos and different uh, outputs, so digital outputs, things like that. Um, it runs off of 5 volts and you can use an external uh, power source to power the servos. Um, to get started, I put the jumper 1 and 2 in the top positions to be able to run the server shock off the 5 volt USB port on it. And that can power my servo off of the external power. You have to do that or you can technically have it run off of the uh, external output but for my purposes it's easier just for me to separate the 5 volts for the, the power of the servo, the servo shock and then the 5 volt or 6 volts to power my uh, servos. <clears throat> okay, the first thing you do is you want to plug your 5 volts into the micro USB con connector. Then you need to plug a separate micro USB, USB cable into your PS4 controller. Then you need to remove the Bluetooth dongle from the server shock 2 and plug the PS4 controller into the USB port on the server shock. Then hold down the PlayStation button to pair it to the server shot 2. If the PS4 controller lights up orange, it works correctly. Now power up your power supply for your servos and plug in a servo to one of the mini ports to try to move a servo. I use 5.48 5 volts as my power supply because my servos are 5 volts and some of my servos are 6 volts. So it's a good milligram for me. I started off using my linear servo as a test. I connected to the left joystick on the X axis on the controller and it was channel zero for the server shock. I moved the servo forward and backwards to make sure it worked. Now you know it works, remove the micro USB cable from the PS4 controller and plug the Bluetooth dongle back in and make sure you can still control the servo via Bluetooth. Then I started to add more servos to all the ports to, to see if they could all work at the same time. But then it got a high current draw and some of them just stopped working. So I stopped and plugged in one at a time. Plug the linear servo back in to the left joystick on the x-axis, channel 0, and begin again. Then I plugged in a tilt servo onto uh, channel 1, which I control with the left joystick on the y-axis. Then I, then I unplug the linear servo and put in a pan servo in its place. And I got some pan and tilt action with the left joystick. Then I plugged a pan and tilt into the right joystick, which is channels 2 and 3 on the servo shock. Then yet another pan and tilt because I like options into channels 4 and 5. So I can use and control them, I use the right and left triggers on the PS4 controller. 
At this point, the current draw is starting to get a little bit too high, and channel zero had just turned off on me. So I had to unplug the server shock and plug it back in to gain access back to channel zero. Um, figured out that pretty much, um, once I get to about two amps on the power supply, things stop working. So I say two amps would be the limit. I then I unplugged the servos and went back to just one at a time. I moved on to the touchpad controls, but I could only get the X axis for the right and left channels, which is on uh, the server shall be channel six and eight, and the Y axis would be channel seven and nine. Um, but not really a problem for me, because I don't really plan on using the touchpad control at all. Um, after that, I moved on to the tilt um, X and Y channels, which are channels 10 and 11 on the server shock. So I can just tilt my controller up and down, and then the network says two of the channels there. And that worked fine. <clears throat> and with just one servo, I was getting about one amp of current uh, max when I eventually shut my controller to, to make the current go up. And uh, yeah, I then I plugged in some more servos to make sure that I can still control more than one server at a time, and uh, they all worked. So I moved on to the digital outputs. You can use the server shock as a Arduino shield if you would like. I don't plan to use it as an Arduino shield, but you can do what you want to. Arduino headers are included, but you have to solder them on yourself. What I am interested in is using the buttons on the controllers to on the controller to control the digital outputs. But you have to solder on the header to be able to use them. I used right angle double headers to gain access to the digital outputs. So I soldered on some headers and then I began to test it out. I set up a breadboard, jumper wire, and LED to see just to test out the digital outputs. I know it looks like a lot of wire but it's a lot less than it could have been. I use LED, RGB LEDs, so I could do three colors per LED and only have one ground. So I have six grounds instead of 17. Moving on, I began to test out each digital output to see if it worked and it was mapped to the correct pin on the server shop and the right button on the PS4 controller. I began with digital output channel zero which is controlled by the share button. And then I went down each channel and make sure that it was controlled by the correct button. And the correct order from zero to 17 well, on, the, on the controller, it goes share button, L3, R3, options, up, right, down, left, L2, R2, L1, R1, triangle, circle, X, square, PlayStation button, and touch button, and touch pad button. After that, I decided to change the settings of the button to, check, to test out the different uh, things the buttons can do. The buttons by default are just push buttons, but they can be changed to be toggle mode which leaves the LED on till I press the button again. Single shot mode which makes the LED light up for 50 milliseconds. Auto fire which makes the LED flash while I'm holding down the button. And toggle auto fire which is auto fire but I press the button one time and the light keeps flashing until I press the button again. Now on to editing the several settings. I made another pin and tilt and set them up to the left joystick for the pin and the right joystick for the tilt. The servos can be put into two modes, position mode and instrumental mode. Position mode is the default. Position mode moves the servo to the, the position the joystick tells it to go. When I move the joystick, the servo moves and when I stop moving, it goes back to the zero position, just like the joystick. 
Incremental mode controls how fast the server moves. If this how moves the joystick fast or slow, then the server falls the same speed. If I move the joystick slightly, the server also moves slightly. It doesn't go back to zero like it does with position mode. There is also servo hold position and home position recall. Servo hold position means when I press down the right joystick, the pen will stop moving and will not move until I press it again. And home position recall means when I press the left joystick, the tilt will go to its home position. Now I'm thinking outside the box a little and using the servo shock to control a 12 volt linear actuator with the help of a L298N module. I put the 12 volt to the module and leak the grounds of the 12 volt power supply and the servo shock together. Then I kept the PWN jumper on the module so it can be controlled with just digital outputs. I hooked the L298N's IN1 and IN2 pins to digital outputs 4 and 6 so I can control the linear actuator with the up and down buttons. And then I was able to control the 12 volt linear actuator with just a servo shock. My main goal is to put a pan and tail on top of the linear actuator and a camera on the pan and tail and put the setup in my backpack and walk around MegaCon with a bird eye view. I'll make a video on it if I'm able to get it working in time for the con, which is two weeks away right now. But that is an overview of the Server Shock 2 and what I use to plan what I plan to use it for. If you have any questions, just ask.